Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope you spent the new year with some friends and family, and I hope over the holiday season you ate an ungodly amount of desserts like I did. Today I want to talk about what I think is the number one resource for bird photographers, and what I'll show you today, you'll be able to better understand the birds around you, their habitat, their behavior, their feeding preferences, and with this resource you'll also be able to draw inspiration for your own images and better understand what camera settings to use when you're out in the field. The resource that I'm talking about is eBird.org, so you'll want to go to that website, and I've spoke about eBird a few times on the channel but I'll quickly explain it to you in case you don't know what it is. eBird is a free online citizen science database of bird observations so anyone can create an account and what you would do is say you're going out birding or you're going out to do some bird photography you would create a list, a checklist of all the birds you saw on the day and all the totals and you would submit that later on to eBird. Within a checklist you can also submit audio files and you can submit photos of the birds you saw during that day and all of this gets compiled and it's at your disposal on eBird.org. So there's a lot of features within eBird, but I'm gonna be talking about the photo section today because I'm putting in my vote, I think this is the best resource for bird photographers online. To start, the first thing you wanna do is go to eBird.org and if you don't have an account already, I suggest starting one because if you wanna submit your own checklist and you wanna track all your stats and all your data and also see all the data of everybody else, it's just better if you have your own account. And then head over to the Explore tab. Under the Explore tab, you have a few options, but the one I'll be talking about today is Search Photos and Sounds. If we click Search Photos and Sounds, what you'll see at the top here is over 15 million photos submitted, over 500,000 audio recordings, and over 50,000 video recordings. So that's insane, but we don't need all that data, especially depending what you want to do. If you're going to a specific location in your area, or if you're taking a trip elsewhere, you want to narrow that number down, and you want to get the photos that are relevant to you. So there's a lot of things that you can do within this tab and there's a lot of information to draw out from these images. Even if at first you're thinking, well, why is this important? I'll go through it all and I'll give you a real life example of when I used it uh, and how important it could be for your bird photography. So two months ago, I headed to Ecuador for the first time and usually we plan our trips two or three months in advance and that gives us a lot of time to study the species, study their habitats, their feeding preferences, nesting areas etc etc. But this trip was planned a little bit last minute so I only had a week to start preparing for it. As I said before there's over 15 million images to look through and a lot of those aren't necessarily relevant to my trip to Ecuador. So what we can do is come to location and you can either enter a county, state, province or country and you can also enter a hotspot or a national wildlife refuge. So if you're going to a national park for example you can type that in into the hotspot and you can get all the photos that were ever taken in that national park and that's one great way to prepare you for a trip to that national park. What I wanted to do was since I was going to Ecuador, I originally typed in Ecuador as the country and that brought my searches down to 132,000. Now that's good, it obviously narrows down your search, but what I was noticing when I was going through this were a lot of the species on this tab were found all around Ecuador and not necessarily in the small area I was going to because I was going into the Mindo area. So what I did is I removed Ecuador as a location and I went back up to the location tab and I wanted to go down to a smaller level. So country is obviously going to be the biggest you can put, but I wanted to go down to pretty much the county level because I knew I'd be in a really small area of Ecuador. So since I was staying in Mindo, Mindo is in the Pinchincha County. And that brought my total number of photos down to 50,000. And now when I scroll through all these photos, I know that every single one is actually relevant to my trip. And if I'm going to Ecuador for a birding trip and I want to do some research beforehand, I want my research and information to be relevant to Ecuador. I want to see what trees the birds are using, what fruit they're eating, what insects they're eating, what areas they like to hang out in that are actually relevant to my trip. So that's why this is so important. Even if you're not planning a huge trip to go across the globe to another country, but you want to go to just say a park that's an hour away from you that you've never been to before, this is what you want to use. This is what will give you the most information, the most relevant information for your birding trip. So I'm gonna start getting into it now and start telling you exactly what information I draw from these photos and how it helps me when I get into the field. So no matter which location you load up, one thing that you're gonna notice when you start coming down to the photos is there's a big difference in some of the images, obviously in quality, but more so in how much the bird fills the frame. On the left over here, we have this brown violet ear. These really close up images of birds are great because it shows you all their field marks. And if you're going to a new area and you're trying to learn all these species, this is the best way to do it because in a field guide, a lot of times it's illustrations and those illustrations are those birds in ideal plumage. Whereas images like this, it's actually the birds in the field, in their habitat, doing what they do. So it's a lot more relevant than a field guide. For me, the one real negative of only looking at really tight close up images of birds is that you don't really get a great sense of the habitat. So say we come down here to this Andean Ibis photo. 
look how much smaller the bird is in the frame and look how much more habitat you see. So if I was driving down a road in Ecuador and I see a field like this, it might click in my head because I remember seeing this photo that there might be Andy and Ibis in that field. So that's one thing that I would do is just look at all the images, even if it's not the best quality, if it's a little bit further out, because that gives you a better understanding of what's happening around that species. And another thing about the far out images is it's a more likely scenario than having the bird a couple feet away from you and filling your entire viewfinder. So as a photographer, you can look at the further out images and you can kind of get an understanding of their habitat and how you would photograph that species in that habitat. What would you incorporate? What would you leave out? So it's a great way for bird photographers to draw inspiration from birds that they've never seen in the field before. A lot of times people say, oh, I envisioned I would get this shot of this species before I even got it. And sometimes it's hard to do that when you've never seen that species before. But this, it can kind of give you a better mental image of that species and where it lives. And it can help you envision the shot that you're going to get before you even get it. And another great resource for bird photographers is going to the top right over here and where it says recently uploaded, change that to best quality. I like to use the other page for general information. So just information on the species, if I can draw conclusions about the habitat they like to stay in. But this page, when I go to best quality, it's just to get photographic inspiration pretty much. I love to see all these different species and the great thing is say for example you see this white-throated screech owl and you say wow that must have been a tough photo to take you can click on the image and you should rate it definitely if you if it really pops out to you you should definitely rate it so if you click the Macaulay library tag for this image it's gonna bring you to the image itself and then if you scroll down you're able to see the camera and lens it was taken with and you're able to see all the metadata and then you can go on the left over here and you can see when it was taken so the date you can see the time it was taken and you can also see the map so if I click on the map over here it will open up directly in Google Maps and it'll bring you right to where the checklist was submitted. So extremely helpful information for bird photographers. If you're going somewhere you've never been before, especially, I highly recommend this. So what I just shared is kind of like the basics of this tool. You can go even more in depth and what I would suggest doing if you know you're going on a trip, say during January, I would come under date and select January here. This is like the custom area. You can go January to January. So now every single photo that you see underneath here is photos of birds that were taken in the area you're searching in January. And you can search by all these different parameters. So you can add all these different filters to your images. You'll be able to see the different flowers that hummingbirds are feeding at. You can go down like this golden collared honey creeper. You can say, oh, it's at a fruit feeding station. So I might actually encounter this species at one of the fruit feeding stations. So all the information and all the inspiration you need to make great photos when you go on a trip, they're all hidden within these photos. You have to be a little bit of a detective to kind of figure out, okay, what type of habitat it's in or what is it feeding on? But overall, this just gives you so much valuable information as a photographer. A couple weeks ago, I released my Eastern Screech Owl video and a few of you messaged me on YouTube and on Instagram and you said, do you have any tips for finding these birds? Cause they're so well camouflaged. And honestly, this is exactly what I did. I went on eBird, I typed in Eastern Screech Owl, I typed in Montreal, Quebec, Canada as the area. And I just looked at every single image and I looked at the size of the cavity. I looked at how the birds were positioned inside the cavity. And when I went into the field, I looked at similar trees and I looked at similar sized cavities. And I went through maybe 50 or so empty cavities until I saw one from really far out and immediately when I saw it, my heart just started racing because I knew that there was an owl in there. I think if you want to make better bird images, it all stems from finding more birds in the first place. So I hope this resource was helpful for you. I find it extremely helpful for myself. I hope you learned something today and I hope I taught you something valuable. Let me know down below if you use eBird. I'm curious if other people in the community are using it. The next time you see me, I might be in a different country, but my lips are sealed. I don't want to say anything until I get there. But until then, happy birding. <laughs>